So today we're going to talk a little about the different kind of uh, heads, like tripod heads for wildlife photography and for nature photography in general. And um, I have collected like uh, three different type of uh, heads that uh, I use uh, quite a lot, all of them, like two ball heads, uh, gimbal style, and then the video head that I also use a lot for like still photography. And um, I'm trying to, uh, this will not be a short video uh, because I I like to do it short when, when there's a, like an easy thing to go through and say like, uh, this is how I think it is, but, but like, trying to, to, to say what is the best tripod head for wildlife photography, uh, in my opinion, is probably the same as saying what is the best knife for cooking. It totally depends on what you're going to photograph and it's going to depend on if you're using like a macro lens, a telephoto zoom uh, or a big, uh, big guy like this one. Um, and I think there's a it's not a simple answer, but for these of you who don't want to hang out for, for the rest of this video, I would say if I could only choose one head of this one that I should use for all the photography I do, it would be this one. Uh, the really right stuff, uh, BH55. Uh, so yeah, that's it. But uh, I think there are much and uh, many more details to this. Um, some pros and cons with the different heads. Uh, what they're especially good for and what they're not so good for. And I also want to uh, talk a little about the, the different connections and this lovely thing that I have done on my tripod. I have kind of, what to say, pimp up my Gitzo tripod with a nice little uh, um, thing. I think it is time for uh, Photographer's Friday. So uh, yeah, let's get started and talk about some tripod heads. Do you know that feeling of when um, when you're watching someone else having something nice and you don't have it yourself? I, I reckon that's probably how some of you, um, maybe I know some of you have already made a cup of coffee or something before you start the video, but uh, now it's time to press the, the pause and go out and make one or get yourself something nice because I'm having a good time here in the little studio. Mm -mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, first of all, um, Let's start with the ball head. Uh, I think that's the most flexible uh, of all the, the, the tripod heads because it is good for doing macro photography like close up, landscape, all kind of stuff because it's so flexible. You can, you can go to all angles and you can basically do everything with these uh, heads. And um, the good thing about it, I don't know if you saw my video about where I use it as a kind of like a um, gimbal style head uh, by taking my lens on this one. I'll put a link to the video up there. Put it down here and then you can basically do the same thing as you can with a, a gimbal style head. So that is why if, if I could only choose one head, uh, it would be the ball head and it, it would be this ball head. Not because it's the really right stuff for the brand itself, just because I think it is incredible well-built. It's a huge ball, it's, um, it's so powerful. I've been using it for like, I think six or eight years now, and it's still just as good as when I bought it. The thing I like about this, this one, like this specific one is, <clears throat> It's very heavy duty. It has a, a huge knob, a knot knob hmm. here. Uh, it has a friction screw. That means that if you have the, a very light, like a mirrorless camera, it, you can take it loose. Then if you have a bigger one, it's getting more tight. It's a little friction screw with numbers and you can like get this, the exact resistance you want. And the good thing about that is if you put on a telephoto lens on this one, and even though you lose the big uh, lock knot here, um, it will not just fall down and damage the camera and the lens. It still has a lot of resistance. resistance. And by tightening this little, resi re <laughs> this little resistant knot, um, 
you can you really have to put power into to move it <clears throat> so this is this is awesome and then of course you have the the the, the, the one for panning the panning screw here um, most of the time when I just use a telephoto lens I just pan up here instead I'm not going to say all the names and all the weights and all the dimension but I'll put a link in the description to these ball heads so you can actually go and read about it yourself <clears throat> uh, the reason why I have chosen a heavy duty one here is because it was the first ball head I got uh, the first real good ball head I, I got I had to go through all the cheap one first to to figure out to find one that uh, that was uh, good enough and the re reason why it's so heavy duty is because beside using it for landscapes uh, close-up photography and that kind of stuff where i put my camera directly on this one i wanted it to be able to to actually carry my 600 millimeter when i put it on the side um, and it can do that even though it's not the perfect solution but by buying this heavy one, you can say I pay a little with, with weight and volume, but I get one head that I can bring along with me on all my trips and it can it can handle everything from the smallest camera to the to the biggest one. So this is my all over favorite. And when I'm talking about that I went through some cheap uh, uh, ball heads first and they were rubbish and stuff like that, I, I don't mean that you have to spend a lot of money on a ball head i just mean that if you can find something cheap or cheaper that is as good i would definitely go for it i just wasn't able to do that but i, I reckon a lot of thing has happened since i bought this uh, quite a few years ago so that was the uh, b855 from uh, really right stuff then i got myself a little smaller ball head and i even have a smaller one that is sitting on that camera uh, on that tripod. This one is the Acrotech and um, the, the, the reason why I got this was because it's an open construction meaning that it's uh, much lighter. Um, you can see how it's kind of uh, open in here. It's much lighter. I think it's like half weight of this one and uh, it's just the volu volume is just much smaller and the, the nuts are still really, really nice. The grips here are really nice to, to, to work with. It has a really, really good build quality and it basically has the same uh, um, features like this one. Still Arca style and um, yeah, obviously because it's smaller, it's lighter. This is the tripod head I like to bring if I want to travel light and if I'm not bringing lenses like this one um, because this this one is simply not uh, it can hold it but it's it's not powerful enough for this one it this this lens is so heavy it put it puts too much stress on the on the head so um, if I'm having a, tr a trip to the forest with my uh, we're doing close-ups and landscapes and stuff this is uh, the the head I uh, I want to bring and as you can as you can see and as you you will hear in in the video here it's uh, um i'll say this one is my favorite and if i could only have one head this would be it these ones are like have more specific purposes that means that i could live without them easily but they are nice to have not need to have for me um, so this one is like my my lighter weight thing uh, and i have a, a few others i i, I use for uh, for um, for trips like that yeah so next one is uh, where we get a little more specialized but uh, let me just have a little sip of the coffee first mm. the um, the best way to to uh, to uh, to start this one is actually to take the limitation of my favorite head because the problem with this one is that if you have a 600 millimeter or a 400 28 or just a very heavy lens, uh, you don't want to have the lens on top of this one because every time, let me just try with this one. Now I, I, I can't sit here without a tripod and hand hold this, well, the 600 millimeter, but uh, just for an example, when you have your lens on this one and you're standing out there, every time you loosen the, the nut here, you know, the lens will go like so, it, it will, it'll, unless you hold it and lock, and then it will stay in position like so, 
but then the moment you you unlock or something it will fall down and especially when you loosen this knot here so that the lens can flip around then you know when you're holding the camera and you know it will it will go out like this and it will fall out like that this is why i show in the other video that i always then put the lens out here so to demonstrate it i'll hold it in my hand and uh, then you can like go like this and you can turn your camera so it goes like so 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 far so good the problem is there's no problem as long as the lens looks like this but imagine me holding this guy with the 600 millimeter with six kilos out here i wouldn't be able to and that stress is going through the ball head to the tripod and because if it's the the weight is off centered it can be pr pretty hard to like turn so you don't get these silk smooth movements so that is the limitation of the ball head because the weight gets off centered and the lens is not balanced the same way as on a gimbal head this one is uh, the the gimbal style head and let me just take the tripod up here just to give you a demonstration on the beauty of the, of such a gimbal gimbal head here the the wimbly one in this case get this a little further down just so you can see it a little better it's pretty simple because you can you can uh, balance the the lens we of course with the camera on and let's say it's a little bad example this because it makes it harder when this one moves because then the balance will 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 also move but see first thing you do with this head is like you you balance like in this case let's say it's here and when you then move your camera up and down the lens will stay after this has been calibrated as well see now it's very loose and it will stay wherever wherever you put it meaning that you will have your hands free to to work with the camera and with a zoom or with a focus without this one is uh, going anywhere and of course it has to be balanced perfectly to to work um the good thing about this is uh is the weight of the lens is centered everything is centered here that's the whole point that's why it's in balance so actually you you feel it's like there's no different from standing with a, a 150 to 600 or like a 600 it's the same feeling of being very smooth and very light and it just takes the weight away from the equipment you don't feel that like with a 600 on this one you feel like a heavy side weight that you it's very easy to flip if you don't really concentrate about putting your tripod upright but this one is very easy so that is why i love this head when working with the big telephoto lenses this is like the correct way like that is the way they do it on the website with these two handles on the left side and your hand with the camera and then you can like tighten and loosen here uh, but <clears throat> as some of you might have seen i'm doing it a little different and uh I'm doing it this side and there were some comments last time like saying do you know that you are using it uh, the wrong way around but for me this is a better way around and that is because you just take this off <clears throat> I probably haven't cleaned my lens and then some of you will comment that it's dirty oops and now you will comment that I shouldn't <laughs> do it with my sweater anyway so uh, I'll just stop doing it so here the reason why I have it on this side is like I just put the, the resistance one time for all, like here, so that it moves how I want. And then I prefer not to have this in my way, because especially working with a 600, I like to be like this, working with a manual focus, or here with a zoom, and just be able to, to, to deal with my lens on this side. And by having it this side, this one is kind of, kind of in my way. And then sometimes when I do it, I'll touch this and it'll get loose, so uh, I prefer it over here because I ne never need to tighten or loosen these or if I need it I can I can do it like this so uh, that's the that's uh, that's that it works
Enough about the Wimbley head. So what is the disadvantage about it? Where you working with a lens where you don't have this um, I don't know what it's called, this ring. Let's say that you're just having it on your camera. First of all, it's, you see, it doesn't fit there. Then you turn it around and then it fits. And I know now I'm, I'm... So the problem is that you can't turn your camera like this way. Like there's no way you can... Yeah, if you have a sidekick, you can turn it upside down, but you can't adjust it this way. So the only way you can do that is is to uh, attach the the lens like so, and when you do that, then you have the benefits of being able. Oh, where are you dear? Then you have the option for doing this. You know, then you can go like so, so. Then you're flexible. But without this ring, without the attachment of of uh, uh, on the lens, you you are not flexible that way around. So that is um, that is one big disadvantage with the, with the Wimberley head. And that is also why I most often bring the, oops, most often bring the ball head instead, unless I know that I'm going to work with a big 600 millimeter or other big telephoto lenses. So yeah. So, just to sum it up a little between these, um, this one, super flexible head that can be used for everything and in an emergency it can also be used for the 600. I have used that uh, many times. Um, if you, this one, the same, just uh, much lighter, um, uh, a little smaller, uh, nicer to bring if you don't want to. If you want to travel light, but then you're lack you're lacking the ability to actually use the big lenses. Of course, you can use it, but it's really not good. If you shoot mainly the big lenses and you're doing a lot of birds and wildlife and not so much of the other thing, this one is an awesome uh, tripod head because you have the weight centered, you feel your equipment is getting weightless and it is so easy to, to, to use. The, uh, the drawback is like the, the thing you're sacrificing is the uh, flexibility. You don't have, it's, it's just really bad head for doing close-ups, for doing landscapes, all kind of stuff. So I'd say this is more like a hardcore big telephoto lens uh, wildlife photography tripod head. Yeah, that's a gimbal style. And again, this is the Wimberley and it, it, it's the same as with the other one. It's a very expensive brand. It's a very good brand, um, but you can probably find something cheaper that is also very good. One thing to be aware of is with, uh, many of the cheaper heads, um, this this uh, knot here is supposed to stay the, like so, to stay with this one. Because if this one, for some reason, uh, locks a little bit so, like, like I do now, it will get, now you see, now it's just so loose and uh, it's not good anymore. And then you have to tighten it all the time to keep the same resistance. So it has to stay there. And if of some reason, I've had a few of these heads where this one started to get loose, but uh, with the Wimberley, I was lucky they just, uh, I just sent it over and they replaced the thing. And one of the times they just basically replaced the head. So awesome service over there. Uh, and this is also very old. I think it's like eight years old now. Um, fantastic head. Last head I want to talk about is this one. I actually got this. You have seen that. Uh, I've used it in my photo blind in the bird photography video and um, I have it this mounted on the ground pot. And I will do a video about the ground pot, uh, uh, just showing the dimension and how I made, uh, how, uh, how it's been made and um, uh, just make a, a like, yeah, write down the dimension so you can like replicate it if you want because it's a really good piece of equipment. But getting back to this one, uh, I got that because when I started doing video with a big telephoto lenses, uh, I found it uh, a little hard to move, uh, to make soft movements with the Wimberley head. Because this one is created for, for making stills, that means that you can move and click, 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 or you can make panning, but, but the smoothness of the move, movement and the, what you say, like the, um, what you say when something, like the, how fluent it is, uh, it, it can be, when you do it, when you do video panning, it has to be very smooth, not like so. And 
that means that you you need to put a, a certain pressure so that you can keep that pressure throughout the the the, the movement <coughs> oops you can do that with these heads these uh, like the the the, the liquid damped uh, video heads because when you when you do a movement here you you feel like a kind of resistance that means like oh i don't know how it's made but it's it's so very smooth so this one i it was meant for only video use but i love it so much because this one gives me such smooth movement and when i do when i pan my big 600 after a running animal sometimes or a bird with a wimbly head i feel like i have to move but at the same time not move too fast and that gives kind of like a, a what to say a jackery movement where this one is like I put the pressure, this one put the resistance, and it's so fine to adjust. So, <clears throat> this one is much, much better for video than the Wimberley head. The problem about this one, if, you're, if, you, if you talk about the problem, is that compared to the Wimberley head, if, if I go on a, on, a, on a trip or expedition or something, this one packs down much more easy. Like so this one is not easy to pack down anywhere in the photo bag you can't put it on the side you can't put it in the front it takes up a lot of space um, the weight I think is more or less the same so that's not a problem um, another issue with this one is like you can't balance it in the same way as you do with a with a, um, with a 600 on the Wimberley it's good for what it's good for but but you don't get the same like balanced head where you can just point and leave it this one will either fall forward or backward if it's not balanced and if it is balanced it will flip flip back to the same position also meaning that if you're sitting in a blind you want to point your camera somewhere because there might be like a squirrel coming up every so often you sit there and then you point the camera so you just have to take your hand up and, and shoot you can't really do it with this one unless you put it there and and, and lock it but then there's no point in it so <clears throat> The arm here is to put on so that you can like make very smooth movements, but I, I don't use that because when I have the 600, it's easy to move. Another thing um, is I, I, I find it incredibly annoying that the Aquatech, the Really Right Stuff, uh, almost all the other brands are using the Arca style uh, plate, which is luckily included in the Tamron uh, now, uh, in the foot here. And I don't I have no idea why Nikon and Canon and, and the other ones are not doing that. Uh, it's such an, it's such an, uh, like it's just such a, a bad decision I think because even though something, is, uh, even though you use it like this uh, with the Manfrotto style, you, you could still have the, the basic Arca style that will save a lot of people a lot of money because I had to take off the original Nikon one and put on an Arca style one because I didn't want a foot and then another one. Uh, I just wanted uh, it to be as plain and simple as possible. Um, so I had to take the Manfrotto style on this 600 to be able to use this head. And then if I, for some reason, want to take it over on this head, I need to take this uh, uh, Manfrotto plate off so I have the Arca style uh, again. If any of you have any solution on that, um, please let me know because I would love a, a quick release system so I could switch between these two uh, plates. Um, but yeah, I, you know, it's the same good old story. Uh, the, the different uh, manufacturers just have to be stubborn and have their own system because they believe it's better. But the good thing is that most professional, very good high-end brands, including the, 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 the smaller one, are now using the uh, Arca style and that's awesome. So, <clears throat> that was uh, about the tripod heads. Just before I get to the to this smart uh, pimped Gitsu tripod, I just want to, to, to take a minute to, to make a sum up on, uh, on, the, on the different heads. The ball heads uh, are very flexible, very good for everything. If I could only choose one head, this would be it. And I would say for everything up to like 300, 28, even 504, 0, I think 
I would probably just use this head because I, then I just have to concentrate on one thing in my bag. Because I'm shooting with a, the bigger lenses and it's an old one, it's heavy, uh, I really like to have this one as well. Also because it doesn't fill up that much in my bag. Um, and because I shoot video and because I sometimes like the very smooth movements when I pan after birds, um, I have this one, the Manfrotto. And again, I'll put links in the description for the different heads. Last thing, the tripod. Um, when you're using a Wimberley head, uh, it's uh, quite annoying with uh, when you have a tripod and you know sometimes the, the tripod is, uh, is not even on the ground. It can, it can be a little tilted or something. Uh, and the, the, the whole point in, in having this one is like shooting your tripod like this. See, let's just say it's it here. Uh, you have to adjust the legs on the tripod and that's incredible uh, time consuming when you're out there. And uh, this one basically lets you move the base of the tripod. See? You're basically moving the base of the tripod. And it's just, um, it's a connector. Let me just take it off so you can see it. It's a, such a thing goes down there, you remove the base on the tripod, on the guitar tripod in this case, and put this one down. And then you get this one, uh, which is like a half ball or something. They have different diameters. And then you have this one that go on, on the button and it actually locks it. It will prevent you from taking the tripod all the way out to the ground, but you can just cut it. So I think actually there's no drawbacks on having this on the tripod, uh, not that as far as I have experienced, but it's very, very, very nice. Even though you're just shooting with a ball head and you need to do a minor adjustment um, and you're sometimes it's faster, just basically take this one and do, you see, do a small adjustment here and then lock it instead of having to move the, the, the ball around. So yeah. I would say if I didn't have the 600 millimeter, like the very heavy one, if my biggest lens was like a 7200, a Tamron 150 to 600, because I know a lot of you guys are having a, maybe a, a 150 to 600 or maybe a 300 to 8 and stuff like that. And then you have like a 1635 or a, or a 7300 and a, a smaller camera or, or a, a, a bigger camera. I would say this one is probably overkill. I would then, if, if, if I was in that case, I would probably get the, this is the 55, um, BH55, I would probably take the one, the number smaller, and then maybe even get a quick release instead of this stick. That is probably, that would probably be my choice and, and uh, I don't want to make a recommendation because I, I, I how, uh, no, no, it's, uh, I'll just say what I would do, but uh, I would get the, the one that is in the number smaller than this one, because that is totally fine for, for equipment up to that size I just mentioned. I think that was, uh, that was it. I'm really, really, really uh, looking forward to, uh, to uh, getting out in this autumn, because outside now, outside the, the window, uh, the autumn colors are beautiful. And when I'm done with this video, I just want to upload it today. Today's Friday and tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to the forest and photograph uh, with a drone and just with my, uh, with my um, uh, telephoto lenses, because I want to capture some of these beautiful colors before they disappear. And then, on Monday, I'm having a, a bunch of kids actually here, and um, maybe actually before I start talking about that, because it has absolutely nothing to do with tripod heads or photography. <clears throat> so for these of you who uh, have other things to do, I just want to say bye and thank you for uh, for watching. And for these of you who still haven't pressed the stop button. I just want to, to talk a little about because of course I do other things than wildlife photography. Um, and one of the things I'm very fashion, uh, fascin fascinated about is like a priv primitive uh, technology, like so like what to say from the stone age, I do a little flint napping, I do uh, skin, uh, what to say, skin carving, 
uh, tanning and stuff like that. Um, I like to to uh, to go out and collect the um, edible plants and, and and things about like just this uh, whole thing. I, I don't know if it's called bushcraft or what it's called, but uh, I really really love that. And um, Monday, I'm having a bunch of small kids, and uh, they are between uh, three and six years old. And we are having a theme uh, that I call like a day in the stone age. So they will arrive, arrive here in the farm and I'll be sitting down in the forest, uh, probably dressed in, wait, hold on, hold on. Probably dressed in, give me a second. Look, probably dressed in this one. This is like uh, my little uh, stone age costume. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll be sitting down there, and I hope uh, uh, I hope they'll not run away. But um, yeah, I'll be sitting in this, doing a, a spear or something, and then they are coming down there, and I'm going to tell them a very nice story about how uh, the people lived here in the Stone Age and uh, how I. Like just a nice story that can catch their attention and uh, you know get their fantasy rolling. And then we are going to. I have made such a, a tree that is dead that I have taken uh, the what do you say the skin of a tree, bark. No, I don't know what it's called. You take that away and then it's a pure white uh, pine trees. And then I have some some paintings which is made from ochre, you know, from the ground, uh, brown, red, yellow. And then they can paint this. Uh, um, different patterns on this one and the story will be something about that uh, when the people lived here they were very dependent on the animals and they were living together with the with with, uh, with nature in a different way that we are today and about how they um, how they believe that they have to do certain things to be lucky on the hunt and then I, I tell the, the kids that now we are living here like this is our our place our little uh, uh, settlement and um, now we have to uh, now we have to uh, in this little clan we want to paint this one so it can bring us luck and then I have cut out some small bits of uh, reindeer antler and drilled some holes with the leather, leather thing so that they can make a little amulet that can bring them luck and then we are making fire and uh, they are taking, what is it called when you take a, a dough and put around a stick and then over the fire. So they are also going to do that. And then I'll probably paint myself a little bit with the ochre paint. And then these, um, these small kids can do the same. And then I'll probably get a problem with their parents because they come home and look like a small caveman. But uh, yeah, I love doing things like that. I love doing flint napping, all that kind of stuff, because it's just like traveling back in time to, to, to a time where people were actually like living in nature. And uh, yeah, so that'll be Monday. Thank you so much for watching and sorry for it being a long video once again. I hope you got a little inspiration about this and if you have any questions just leave a, a comment and I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. <sighs> See you out there.